welcome to another free YouTube tutorial. This time around, I'm going to address a really, really good question that came into us the other day, a question about valuation that causes a lot of confusion and that we've seen pop up a lot in the past. I don't understand how you calculate valuation multiples. When you look at historical figures for items like revenue or EBITDA, I get that you calculate enterprise value as of today's date or whatever date you're valuing the company. You take that enterprise value and you divide it by those figures to get the multiples. But what about future revenue and EBITDA figures? So if it's the middle of 2014 and we're looking at the projected 2015 or 2016 figures, why do you still use enterprise value as of today's date in those calculations? So, so in other words, I'll go down to this set of comparable companies I have. We're looking at French telecom and holding companies here. A little bit random, but it's just what I had available at the time. So in other words, we have enterprise value for all these companies. Let's just take a look at Vivendi, which is the company we're actually valuing here. So they have an enterprise value of around 23, 22.9, 23 billion euros. And we have their projected revenue and EBITDA and adjusted net incomes over here. So when we calculate their historical enterprise value to revenue multiple, which is 1.9x here, or their historical EBITDA multiple, it's pretty clear that we take today's enterprise value and we divide by the historical number. But for the future ones, for 2014 and 2015, we're still, if you look at the math, we are still taking their enterprise value as calculated here, and now we're just dividing by those future figures. So why do we still take that single figure to do that? The easiest way to answer this is the following. You never project enterprise value because the company's share price and therefore its equity value and its enterprise value as of today's date reflect both historical financial performance and future expectations as of today or as of the valuation date. So this enterprise value of 23 billion for Vivendi, 23 billion, billion euros that we went through before, this reflects what they earned in the past year or the past 12 months, but it also reflects what the market, what everyone in aggregate thinks the company will earn in future years because company share prices trade based on those future expectations. So if the company makes an announcement and says, you know what, we're going to acquire this new company. We think it's going to be great. Our business is going to expand and we're going to earn more in earnings per share. We're going to earn more revenue as a result. Well, chances are share price is going to increase, not because it's already happened, but because now everyone thinks it's going to happen in the future. And similarly, if it announces a new product or something like that, that people think is going to perform really well, that's another future expectation that the share price is going to trade based on. One way to think about this is to imagine what it would actually take to project enterprise value. So let's look at the counterfactual. Let's go back to this question and say, you know what? Let's assume that he's right. Let's assume that you can actually project enterprise value like this. And we want to get the 2015 or 2016 end of year enterprise value figures. What would it take to do that? So to do that, we would have to project first off of any share price because we need that to calculate equity value and enterprise value. We need to project their cash, their debt, and all the other items that go into enterprise value, which we've been through before. And let's say for sake of argument, we want to get it at the end of fiscal 2014 or the end of fiscal 2015. Well, to do this, you would actually have to invent a time machine because what you'd have to do is jump to that future date, the end of 2014 or the end of 2015, and then see Vivendi's historical results. So at this point in the future, 2014 will be the past, 2015 will also be the past. And then what you'd have to do is look at that future date and go forward in time and look at what people's new expectations for the company are two to three years into the future or whenever it is into the future. So you'd actually have to jump to the end of 2014 or 2015 and then say, okay, you know what? What are people thinking about this company's prospects now? We know what its revenue was projected to be as of today's date, one or two years in the future, but what about now? What about the 2016 or 2017 or 2018 revenue? So you'd have to get expectations as of that date in the future in order to actually do this. And then what you'd have to do is actually go in and change around all of your figures here to reflect those new expectations. So let's say hypothetically, we are able to do this. We are able to change their enterprise value and we are able to say, okay, you know what? Let's look at their enterprise value as of the end of 2014. And let's say it goes up to 24 billion euros. 
Well, we can't just change that. What we'd have to do now is actually go in and change the 2014 figure because we'd have to use the actual figure they reported. We'd have to change the 2015 revenue figure because now the market has an, is going to have a new expectation for the company as of this date at the end of 2014. So we might have to change this to the actual number they reported. We might have to change this to their new expectation about the future. And you can see the problem with this, that you really can only have one set of projected numbers like this. And that one set of projected numbers has to reflect future expectations at one specific point in time and historical results as of one specific point in time. And that is why this concept of projected enterprise value makes no sense. So the bottom line is if you can invent time travel somehow or you can open a wormhole or do something like that or come up with faster than light travel and actually go in the future and then come back to today, sure, projecting future enterprise value makes sense. But if not, I would suggest not even thinking about this. And the core reason, again, is that you don't know what those future, future expectations will be. It's hard enough to figure out what today's expectations for the future will be. It's even harder to go even further ahead in time and see what people will be thinking about future results in the future. Are there any exceptions or special cases with this? There are two exceptions and special cases that come to mind that I want to go through. One exception is that sometimes you will create a future share price analysis. And the idea here is that you project the company's share price and then you discount it to its present value, its net present value based on a certain discount rate. I have an example from one of our other case studies here for Yahoo, where essentially we have taken the company's share price as of the time of this case study. We looked at their trailing 12 months earnings per share. We looked at their projected earnings per share for the next year. And then we looked at the multiples for Yahoo and the comparable companies. And what we did is we applied the current multiples to the company's projected earnings per share. And we used that to come up with the implied future share price at that point in the future. And then, of course, we discount it back to today's value based on the discount rate that we've selected, which is usually something based on cost of equity for the company. So this is one case where you actually do end up projecting the share price at some point in the future. But the point of this analysis, the purpose of this analysis is very different. We're not really trying to figure out what the equity value and the enterprise value of a company in the future are going to be and then use it for comparable public companies, for example. We're really using it to get a sense of the company's value today. And that's why we discount that future share price to today's value. So we're still not concerned with what the value a year, two years, or three years in the future is going to be. We're still using that analysis to get to what our company might be worth today instead. Another exception is that sometimes if you're looking at older multiples, so let's say you're looking at revenue or EBITDA multiples from a year ago or two years ago or something like that, then you might go back and actually calculate the historical enterprise value. So you might go back and look at the company's share price from a year ago, two years ago, their balance sheet and their cash and debt and so on figures from a year or two ago, and then calculate enterprise value at that point in time. And the purpose here is to see how the company's valuation has changed over time. How have its multiples changed over time? Have they increased, have they decreased? what's going on there. So you do see that sometimes. Our recommendation on this is that we think it's best to use only one historical period and only one set of historical multiples in your analysis. So for example, let's say that you have a few historical periods to consider. You have the calendar year ending 2013, December 31st, 2013. You have the calendar year ending December 31st, 2012. And then you have the last 12 months between July 1st, 2013, and June 30th, 2014. Instead of using all these in your analysis, which might cause some confusion about which version of enterprise value you're using, we recommend picking either the last 12 months period or the 12-31-2013 calendar year period and just going with one of those. So that's the easiest way to get around this issue and avoid confusion. And then all the forward multiples can just be standard and should all use today's enterprise value or the enterprise value as of whatever valuation date you have in your analysis. So that's a bit of a more in-depth explanation to answer this question. But again, it all comes back to a company's share price and therefore its equity value and enterprise value reflect historical results and then also future expectations at this point in time whenever you're doing this analysis. And that's why it doesn't make sense to project enterprise value when you're valuing companies.